things that he's doing. I want to challenge us just before we start our teaching tonight that we never get too familiar with the things that God is doing. The training of the saints, the equipping of the saints is something that we must all together submit ourselves to. Hallelujah. There is power in being built. There is power in being trained. Because as we are sharpened, as we are trained, then we become more aligned and we become more usable. It's not enough to be available, you must be usable. Being usable is a product of alignment and it's a product of training. And so I appreciate every single one of us tonight and all those who are following us online, we love you. And I ask that the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. I am ever conscious of the fact that as a man of God, every time God gives you access to people, um, the primary responsibility is to be able to supply enlightenment. If as a pastor or as whatever leader, head of a church, ministry, organization, you are not actively contributing to bringing enlightenment in people then you are wasting their time it's a total waste of time i don't care what else happens in that church if at the end of every service the people leave the way they came no growth no wisdom no access to power no enlightenment then uh, it's a total waste of time total waste of time hallelujah and by the grace of God, we thank God for investing so much of His grace upon our lives such that every time we come, we are guaranteed that we will rise from one dimension of knowledge to the other in the name of Jesus. I'm teaching on the Dominion Mandate, part one. The Dominion Mandate. I think this is very timely and it's very important that... We come into this understanding. It's been a phrase that has been greatly used in the body of Christ. It's been largely abused um, because it's been used without understanding. Praise the Lord. And I'm trusting that God will grant us grace. Revelation chapter 5. We'll read 2 verses 9 and 10. Help us tonight, Holy Spirit. The dominion mandate. Revelations 5, verse 9 and 10. Are we there? It says, And they sung a new song, saying, 
thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us unto God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. We are going to read verse 10 together. One to read. And has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. One more time. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. There are certain doctrines. Please listen. Just a little theological background. There are certain doctrines that are considered foundational to the understanding of any believer. When you get born again, you don't just grow haphazardly, you don't grow carelessly. It matters the doctrines that are introduced to a believer at his encounter with Christ. This will guide your growth, the efficiency of your growth or otherwise. Are we together? Not every dimension of knowledge is needed at every time. It is important that the informations that are supplied believers, especially as they grow, are strategic enough to be able to make their growth useful. It's like building. I always give this analogy. After you lay a foundation, the next thing is not a zinc. Is that true? If you put a zinc, you're going to destroy the building. You can't say you have a house. A zinc is part of the requirement, but there will be a time for zinc. So theologically speaking, there are, excuse me, certain foundational truths. Um, and I believe that one of the reasons why believers are not very mature is because there is a haphazard communication of spiritual truths and realities. It is my considered opinion, and this is also theologically agreed, that when believers come into Christ, the first thing that they ought to know is to have a thorough understanding of what we know and believe to be the finished work of Jesus. That is the very next foundational understanding. There's no point teaching them about money. There's no point teaching them about service in the ministry. If they stumble across a service where that is being taught, then that's all right. But where you are training and building people, there is a system. So they must understand the the realities of redemption number two they must be open to the ministry of prayer any believer that gets born again must be open to the ministry of prayer that is the system with which their spiritual senses are activated if you do not give them an opportunity to be open to the ministry of prayer that activity will become very boring because they will become carnally minded are we together? Number three, they must be open to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, technically speaking, everything we deal with in the kingdom revolves around the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But I mean, they must be introduced consciously to the possibility of a relationship with a person called the Holy Spirit. They must begin to train their spiritual senses to hear God, to understand the word, to interpret scripture. That's the fourth thing. They must be exposed to the ministry of the word. The ministry of the word. It's power to transform their minds. Then several other things now become very useful. When these basics are in place, then when you come in with things like kingdom service, when you now come in with things like the anointing, when you come in with other aspects you know the deeper things of the spirit they have been able to have access to a solid foundation but the moment you get a believer born again and the next thing you are drumming them on principles of money financial reward breakthrough restoration as good as those things are they rape sorry to use that word but that is the best expression they rape that believer and put that believer in a very vulnerable position nothing that brings a sequence of growth will interest the believer again are we together now because the believer just wants to receive to sit down and learn i'm not interested or someone just gets born again and you are not exposing them to the prophetic 
and the gifts of the spirit it looks powerful until you watch them misuse it they will access the anointing and begin to walk in many things but lack of character will destroy it are we together now and sooner or later those people will tell you two months they will tell you they are called into ministry six months later they are already in trouble it's important that believers be guided i am persuaded that this should be the factors that should be examined even in appointing responsibilities in the body of christ paul taught us that one who is a bishop a pastor and that applies to anyone a deacon and ordained worker there should be some level of track record of staying in the house of god i'm just giving us a background this is the challenge with celebrities and the house of god celebrities those who were maybe in the world and were celebrity musicians celebrity businessmen when they come into the church they expect the same spotlight correct the same honor so you look at this guy and let's assume he was once a very worldly musician for instance are we together now and then he now gives his life to christ and in a bid to honor him you graduate him unnecessarily into realms and dimensions he has not afforded he sits down where the ministers are sitting you give him offering help and raise offering he stands on stage and you see him speaking babylon you know that this guy he has not he, he has not stabilized he's just barely entering the kingdom but you appreciate it because he has been a celebrity let me tell you whoever you are when you come in the kingdom you must start and join that line you see that yes honor be given to you for your for exposing your value to be rewarded but there must be that system of building i think this is a word from god to many people already all these hilarious ordinations hilarious laying on of hands hilarious appointment of people someone gets born again in two weeks he's ordained sent somewhere we must be careful it will lead to a lot of inefficiency children leading children babes the bible called them unfruitful in the handling of the word of god and so when challenges rise up for on account of the word's sake they do not sustain the spiritual stamina because they have no track record in the spirit they have not learned honor they have not learned authority they have not learned that there are seasons in believers lives where you have to stand they have not like people like watchman Nee would teach they have not learned to sit they have not learned to walk they have not learned to stand one brutal attack and their whole life is finished completely everything are we blessed this kingdom is built through a system and it is important please hear me the way you build matters are we together in construction we know there are there are structures that are built by careless architects and builders and you see that structure no stability is bent anyhow a little rain and half of it everything falls down right to the louvers and there are others that are that are solid like the buildings in dubai meters high above the sky and they are they are with razor sharp precision they were built intentionally every house is built by some man but the bible says god is the builder he says and i will build my church the only thing that is built from the top is the grave never forget this that the only thing you start building from the top is the grave I just felt stirred in my spirit to put that because I want us to experience breakthrough. I want us to love God and know God. But there is nothing that will replace sitting down to learn sequentially to grow. Especially for those of us who probably got born again this year or we rededicated our lives and all of that. And we thank God for the kind of grace in this house. Someone can be born again and in two weeks is already on fire. And people see you and say, Pastor. And then you now enlighten yourself from that flattery and say, Wow, that means this is speed. No. Men cannot see the heart except it is given to them. Hmm? men see the outward appearance so their interpretation 
is based on what they are seeing ah the last time this guy held a mic in one fellowship the way he prayed in tongues and then you use the construction of the tongues to mean he has graduated in the spirit is a joke the level of stamina it takes to be trusted with people is is a dimension that only god can approve very few people know the level of spiritual stamina it takes to host an anointing and to even lead people matter matter you are worried and offended about several things but it says one thing is needful hmm? god must work on you work on you that's why you see us keep teaching let me tell you there are people in this ministry by the grace of god and with all humility i can select people at random at random and not not to be cynical most of them would qualify to be resident pastors in many circles and many denominations but they are not even leaders god is saying sit down I'm ministering to someone because you look at everybody around you this one reverend this one started his church yesterday this one this and you you are not even even an esco in the department and you saying is it that lord you are not seeing me huh do, do, are, are you trying to say i'm not making progress whoever told you appointment is proof of progress If the lifespan of your commitment in the house of God is to be seen and to be appointed into offices, then it's a disaster. So you see people fight like politics. Oh, there is a vacancy. That vacancy is a deacon. And you see everybody coming to greet the pastor. Pastor, good afternoon. I just came to bless you and to let you know what is happening behind your back. I've got you covered. That's a manifesto. That's, that's, that's political party. When Jesus was going to select people that he would train, the Bible says he spent the whole night. Jesus, the fountain of wisdom, knew to appoint men to trust them with responsibility is a serious thing. You judge by the eye and see Eliab and say, surely this is God's anointed and God said, uh-uh, that's not how I choose. Oh. Look at the kind of people Jesus fasted all through the night to choose. You fast through the night and choose weaklings, thieves, fearful people. Why fast? Do you have to fast to see them? He fasted and saw what they would become, as weak as they were. They were already scribes and Pharisees. Jumping and saying, look, just restructure our mindset and that's all. We have reduced the journey. And God looked at a tax collector, wicked man very stupid people and said this is exactly what i'm looking for saul is on his way to damascus and god is looking at him what an apostle killing people you see the way god sees bar let me teach you something if you don't learn this you will make too many mistakes in your leadership and your church there are people seated here inside and outside let me tell you the dimensions they are walking in the spirit probably even me have not entered those dimensions yet they come quietly you see them sit down they are watching they are learning reminds me of how many how students are the real person who is taking first position is somewhere he will write every note with the example and the person who is second to the last yeah, I know that example. It came from uh, that, that uh, book. I, I know this man. I know the book he's reading. Yet he's taking second to the last at the end of the exam. But the one who is diligent will come and sit down and listen. Never promote people emotionally. Give them a chance to have a track record with God. Give them a chance to have a track record with God. Don't love people too much to unnecessarily expose them to levels. And do not flatter yourself into thinking, I think I am fit for a level. Let God himself accredit you. It says, Paul, a man approved, approved. 
there are illegal people the same way there are jam centers there are authorized jam centers correct there are authorized hospitals there are authorized drugs and every authorized drug has a registration number we call it NAFTAC registration number correct whether the drugs are big or small now there are certain people who can connive with other nations and smuggle in drugs put the drugs and put camels on them do all kinds of things it does not make it legal the fact that it was successfully smuggled those drugs in themselves may not kill but they have not been vetted by the institute that was put called navdak that's how it is spiritually you can get up and move and yet you have not been approved let me tell you when people are approved on earth they are assigned thrones in heaven a throne is a symbol of authority those thrones are not just thrones like they are thrones that affirm anointings and mantles and graces that's why somebody can come no rema no revelation but there is a track record and a throne that backs their words they can speak they can stand on behalf of heaven and speak and plead your case and turn around something that has no business turning around and you wonder how are they doing it brothers and sisters i want you to preach to yourself i receive grace to stay until he accredits me i receive grace to stay can you turn it into a prayer in one minute i believe that is the spirit of god that just led me to communicate that i receive grace to stay pray oh the head of department prayer is not seeing me are the leaders not seeing me is this pastor femi not seeing me worship team are they not seeing me to give me songs no never lift yourself stay for when the season of appearing comes let me tell you no mortal man can stop you pray i receive grace pray 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 lord let me be built to its finest let me be one of your finest battle axes on earth thoroughly furnished thoroughly furnished thoroughly furnished not half baked thoroughly furnished unto all good works i receive the grace to stay i receive the grace to learn i receive the grace to be built it may take time but i stay i receive grace i receive grace hallelujah hallelujah i will get to our, our teaching proper but i'm just stressing this oh god is calling you to be a kingdom financier and all of a sudden you are killing yourself trying to wear every clothes trying to buy every watch don't die for nothing god is calling you to be a prophet and all of a sudden you are forcing yourself to see you are not seeing anything this thing is not trial and error keep walking with god one day it will be like a joke you will wake up one morning into a portal a vista just opens up and say so this is what happens until then you force yourself you will see something and what you see will destroy your life destroy others you will bring all sorts of things because you are not trained i watch people and let me tell you this is with all humility i watch people and i see them not able to hold the sword of the spirit i see the disaster that they cause with those swords it takes a skill to hold that sword the bible says with wise counsel make war it, that you have a sword does not just mean you no 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 solomon held that sword in such a way that they could know which child you, you have to hold it well otherwise you will kill people when you are trained by god as a leader you will know when to talk and when to keep quiet they may expect you to speak but you have been so trained full of knowledge yet silent look at moses a man who was heavily anointed yet he never prophesied he kept quiet when the spirit on him came on 70 people none of them could stand yet all of that was in one man and he had self-control see 
a lot of childishness that goes on in the body of Christ. I'm preaching to someone. Some of those things look like the pathways for recognition. You will never. This honor, let me tell you, is a mantle. It comes from heaven with a track record. You can fake it and try to gather a lot of mediocres around your life. But if there is no, this, this ranking you see, increase. It is God. God left it to himself. Plant water. You can increase yourself. Are we together? Men can look at your life and know you are growing. Preaching. There are nine things. I won't teach you today. There are nine things that characterize the ministry of the world. Nine. Preaching or teaching. What we call pulpit ministry. Is the eighth of the ninth eight of it are we together so the ability to preach well is only one over nine nobody gets a with one over nine there are many other aspects are we together one of the requirements is to have the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity you must you must there are times god exposes you to things you have no business going through it has nothing to do with you that is the price you pay for carrying the anointing for the people it is the burden of the people he puts upon your spirit you must taste of it to qualify to minister to them yet there are all kinds of people moving around and will tell you i am this and that i am apostle this i am prophet this i am that and that and your name is emeka i say yes and then the man means that because you said it correctly he is a prophet and all kinds of blunders begin to come you break people's marriages destroy people's destiny because of imbalance all sorts of things i i am a kingdom millionaire i i don't take water in a, in a sachet again i have to use bottle because i'm going far my destiny is far and we do stupid things in the name of i believe in seeing well but faith is not foolishness now let me tell you the danger here is when you look around you you will see very few people subscribing to this pattern and it can intimidate you you are human there are times you sit and say lord but give me an opportunity to and god says you are about to derail you don't know the honor i'm bringing to your life you now want to destroy all run away from all this balloon success up today down tomorrow anointed today you crash tomorrow no god can give you consistency 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 the average ministry that is started in nigeria eight out of every ten close before the year is finished yet you see the conviction god told me i saw it so 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 our vision i saw this and that and in that vision we are going to the nations if you do not understand what i'm teaching you tonight your life will be a track record of blunders sincere encounters that will never manifest in the earth realm till you go to be with the lord i want to save you years of pain are you ready to pray now open my eyes lift your voice and pray open my eyes open my eyes but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory you're the lifter up of my head but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head pray but thou oh lord had a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, you're the lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. Listen to me. There were two brothers in the Bible born of the same father we understand called Cain and Abel two of them went to sacrifice and they thought they were doing the same thing listen 
every time there is no response from heaven find out why because he said if you did it rightly i have no bias for you if you did it rightly there are dimensions i have not entered as a person i don't get responses from heaven it's a sign that there is a level of alignment i need to step into because benihin will come under the same condition and there will be a response from heaven there are there are things i now do and i get responses from heaven that i did not get a response yesterday use the response from heaven to prove it's a sign you've been doing everything around your life there is no corresponding response why continue to flatter yourself i'm not doubting that you are a prophet but i'm saying sit down you carry what you call prophecy you will never go to the nations that way he cannot commit the heart of kings to you oh i'm a pastor call me pastor don't call me brother i'm not a brother i'm a pastor settle down the bible says they shall call you ministers of our god it's not a name you invent for yourself it's an inevitable product of a track record there are many of us already fighting superiors in different ministries they are not allowing men see me if you ever think that way it's a stupid thought from antichrist is from the devil the bible says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel are we together i just feel we should pray one more prayer again say lord i will wait until that grace comes i will wait until i step into the fullness of the grace and the ministry lift your voice and pray Lord, I will pray. I will wait. I am proud of where I am. My contemporaries may go ahead of me, but I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush. There is a making. There is a making. Lakata praka sodo bakariana malaka. Been tried as gold. Tried as gold, the gold of offering, the finest of them. Lekata braska da balada, kasha da braska da balada. How is it, Grace? 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 Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? Hey, a little bit, a little bit. Soon your day will come. Stop working you, changing. Will you swallow your pride tonight? Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? It's a little bit, a little yeah. Soon your day will dawn. Start working.
so stop crying around and looking for invitation invite me i can sing pastor invite me to your church i promise you won't be disappointed no no stay in the secret place let everyone go remain there he will sharpen you mm. sharpen you then when you come out you will be like the gold of offer the finest of it finest of it no guessing listen you see i had a vision day before yesterday when ife the great land of ife and i had a vision and in that vision i saw certain things about my future and i saw dimensions of grace and the anointing that made what i was working now like child's play after that vision i just laid down i said lord thank you this is the exact motivation i need because you see when men clap for you you need to see something far that will make where you are walking now look like shadows i said that's right that's right it is dangerous to have a measure of result the enemy of success is the last one not failure because it can keep you i can prophesy too it's a little but at least i'm there i can minister too i lay hands out of 10 people at least somebody must be healed and you want to be given the keys of nations which somebody must be healed one out of ten is a joke that there is a dimension you enter into that you show up in a place and brothers and sisters is is like is like a charm you move and shift things around this is the bible says sharing is our father glorified when you bear much food you can bear little 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 result because the art head is blunt i look at lives today with the privilege of the grace god has given me and i'm almost crying because i wish i had this anointing years ago i saw people in situations i wanted to help them but i had not accessed the level of grace it took and i look at people now and as great as god has helped me i see dimensions where i need to reach out to people but i see that i'm still bankrupt of those dimensions what have you done that you are beginning to boast i have sons these are my sons these are my daughters where where don't let that pride kill you just because someone acknowledged you and just called you daddy or called you mommy or called you papa it's just their way of honoring your mentorship you are now carried away this is my son son stand up this is my daughter and god is watching you and say leave him there leave him there fast because this guy will be a disaster when he rises you are watched for a season then a thousand cubits is measured again and you step into another level listen this anointing you see the body that carries it must be prepared otherwise it can kill you by itself i'm not talking of demons the anointing is like a sharp knife you use it wrongly to tear you and kill you the very owner elisha died but there was an anointing on his boat don't think the anointing is just something that comes there is mastery it's like standing on slippery ground if you don't know how business is done in deep waters you will slaughter yourself with the anointing because you see when the anointing comes you must understand things in the spirit there are certain things that god can pardon others but you won't go free because of the level of grace you have carried swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands is the key to eternal life it's a little day, a little day soon your day will come start working changing everything yeah. hallelujah I've had the privilege of receiving so many awards many of you never know I've not announced one to you several awards you will never see one on my table I don't trust those things I thank God for them but I don't believe them you see if you if 10 of you write a test ah huh, over 100 and you get 12 over 100 and you are the highest you can get prize for first position but did you pass 
so you have to you don't just say i'm the one leading this thing how far with respect to god's expectation we are talking of dimensions of graces and anointings that have not been seen we are talking of ancient portals opened up hosting god like gods on the earth we are talking of dimensions where miracles are worked unconsciously not all this jamboree and talking and tracking we are talking of putting nations under the feet of jesus stopping the sun to rise over nations until jesus becomes lord joshua did it when you get satisfied with little results oh she got healed oh i prayed for the woman she got pregnant oh i prayed for that dead baby he came back to life you have pegged yourself and you will never rise far am i wasting your time if this is all we do today can we just pray in the spirit for one or two minutes as an indication of our interest to continue lord i'm not leaving your presence not at this time Thank you for what you have done, but Lord, there is more. Thank you for the miracles, but there are higher levels of fire. There are higher levels of power. There are higher dimensions, rankings in the spirit. tell you the kind of training and the kind of weapon do you know North Korea has weapons we've not seen the potentials yet they have been building it nobody is scared of what he already understands the potentials no we've seen the bombs we've seen the ballistic missiles America has weapons that nobody in the world has seen he said thou at my battle axe my weapons of war with you i will beat down nation it didn't say you have it you are it thou at my battle axe listen as darkness looms around the horizons of our family and cities brothers and sisters it will take more than good preaching it will take more than good greek and hebrew words 
it will take men and women who will shut down the heavens over darkness just by entering cities not by poster all of a sudden divination cannot work why because an individual aligned enough to host that level of God prophetically you have all of God but experientially he must be formed in you bit by bit bit by bit you can define your limit in the spirit but I'm challenging someone the destiny is waiting for you cannot be changed the way you are I know you have tried but at the level you give prophecy no nation will be blessed your prophecy has not left individuals to nations there is still room for building this is a, a shake up and a wake up there are still people in our families as anointed as we are darkness is still looming around them that's a sign that you are not refined enough are we together you are doing well as a pastor but you know there is still witchcraft in your family you even acknowledge it so what is wrong with that light there is a way that light can be so bright you will catch a revelation that will make you travel home you will say i'm here just for one day shut the door everybody shut the door i found something no shut the door you shut the door and in two hours people drive to your house saying i'm sorry it's me that tied everybody down it's, it's not my fault and it, oh, hold on I, I i will you crush the gates of hell into pieces listen when john g lake was alive he made spokane the healthiest city in the whole world are we together ew kenyon no man died less than 70 within his environment where have we gone to that we are making so much noise shouting shouting all sorts i am this i have sons five sons international ministry i went to ghana i went to london sit down it's a call one quality of champions is they are never satisfied with where they are others are clapping for you if you join them to clap for yourself you are not wise let them do the clapping while you do the moving you continue to move lord i thank you for this dimension and this grace but then open more frontiers open more frontiers and all of a sudden a time will come they will say you are zeus or hermes they say this person pastor alpha is not a normal human being again what dimension is this what level of grace and unction is this i look at my life today people send me text messages all the time appreciating the grace of god and this is what most of them say thank you for paying the price whenever i get those things they really touch me do you know why because they make me know that if i continue see if you want to host this grace you better find a way of letting pain know that you are not giving up because of it this pain factor that has robbed us this pain factor this pain factor is too painful the training is too much you will never 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 enter the anointing that way pray in the night you are complaining one hour you are grumbling forget about power god is not a herbalist forget about power 30 minutes of praying in the spirit and you are talking no you can't carry power that way it takes a level of stamina 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 that defies the gates of darkness you must defy pain you must defy excessive food this eating like a fool that destroys people you are on a mission going somewhere if you cannot tame your stomach you can't tame any demon eat anything anyhow i'm a human being man must work look at that kind of thinking sleep if you don't conquer sleep you will never host this anointing this slumber and sluggishness and laziness you stand to pray 10 minutes you are snoring and sleeping you can gist and gossip for one day but to stand to do spiritual things and then the time for the word of god 
you open this bible you are yawning you better cast that devil it's a spirit you open the bible you are yawning cast it fast your life is under attack don't ever say it's all right i'm just tired listen men are not anointed by luck there is a price i'm i'm showing you a bit of my private life a bit of the price you see that that's the reason why when people go through this you talk about them even in the secret god punishes you in the open they have they have established an altar through the blood that comes out of them blood is a sacrifice hallelujah something came on me for you today. please let's not play games with this thing if you are in it go for it go for it fast for it pray for it study for it sit down for it sit down for it don't rush anything i assure you one step in his approval will cover the grounds of 20 years there's nothing called wasted time with him please sit down you need to advise yourself tonight myself sit down myself sit down myself sit down myself sit ah you are papa thank god myself sit down you are mama you are deaconess you are prophetess you are apostle you are this myself sit down then you will command levels of power and you will stand and watch what God is doing to you and you will say my God what is this please be seated in Jesus name if I had my way we would just pray till the service is finished because when the water is the Bible says you strike while the iron is hot as it's hot like this you strike it let everything that is not God fly out of that that, that making Let's touch on something tonight. But this message is really a message that struck hard. I believe there are specific people this word is for. God is asking you to wake up and Eli is asking you to go back to sleep. You have to choose who to believe. At your level you are anointed too much you know people send me all kinds of things an apostle of uncommon grace and power i thank god for it but i just look at the text and i laugh do you know what uncommon grace and power is all these programs listen let me give you a frank advice program one program here one event here one crusade here one conference here you won't grow that way a, a conference is not you won't grow that way many of us are obsessed passionate you have a church of two members there are 10 crusades 10 conferences in one year what are you doing be honest with yourself nobody grows that way you sit down and you are sharpened and filed. You know how a razor blade is? When you buy a new razor blade, you touch it on a paper. Pia! That's how it goes. That's what God is saying. You see God lifting all these our people now. Worship team. Gradually, gradually. When, when they all come to me, I tell them, go and sit down. Because... I'm the one supervising the sharpening by the spirit you can feel sharp because you cut wood but what you are going to be cutting are metals not woods metals metals there are machines that ride through metals there are machines that cut stones do you know the the, the strength of those materials you cut through those brah, just cut everything there are others where you subject them through certain kinds of woods they will hook and the machine will stop turning that's nonsense and inferior product 
it's a sign that that was not a good product but when you buy it you buy something it will cut through rocks and pieces them that's what God is telling me to. by the time you stand in all the millions you are looking for you will be so valuable oh I, at my age I think I should have built a house don't worry just stay somebody will bring a car key bring a house key bring all kinds of things and give you be careful unhealthy comparison will destroy you we live in a world that is very carnal I teach you success principles we just finished success systems but be careful unhealthy comparison at my age I am 40 at my age I'm supposed to have five cars and three bungalows okay sorry you don't have it now so what are you going to do about it I, I don't know but God must answer me in this season and the entire circumference of your pursuit is cars and houses you are in trouble though. you are in trouble you are in big trouble learn to know when your life is under attack it's not when you see a spirit appearing there are things around your life that are pointers immediately there are suggestions suggestions that come to your spirit nonsense suggestions unhealthy comparison look at that other pastor he's not as anointed as me that's an attack cast it immediately hallelujah the dominion mandate let's see how far god will help us in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we're looking at part one in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 man as we know theologically speaking is the apex of god's creation and when god i think uh, media just take this part of this teaching and make a podcast out of it huh this this fiery how many minutes we spent make a podcast out of it just carry it like a little tool of revival keep it in your phone whenever you sense you are backsliding just use it plug it and sleep while you are sleeping you will see me yeah it's not pride i will help you and stamp every nonsense yes god doesn't show people people's faces just because they are anointed it's a mystery i've said it many people would think it's witchcraft if you see me in your dream wake up and rejoice something serious happened to you hallelujah you must have the arsenals when you are discouraged what do you have in your spiritual arsenal is there a message is there a tool i tell you woe to that person who has not programmed you don't prepare for battle at the war front you station them there are tools whenever i feel that i'm losing spiritual favor there are tools already there are tools there are tools there are tools god gave me tools tools whenever you feel you are lazy that fasting grace is not there i tell you one correct message listen to it in the night where all the noise has gone off the light sit down quiet and you finish that thing you start the fasting the next day i tell you i tell you and your stomach cries you say you are joking not based on not based on what i had you found out you are not reading books again you keep buying them but you don't read so people keep seeing them and think you are reading them and then one day you listen to one message the word is always god's bailout system if you exempt yourself from the word you're already in trouble there should be a word for seasons in your life there are times honestly you are discouraged you need a word that lifts you everybody will not have your time you must learn to have your own time get the word and sit down hear messages that build you and all of a sudden your faith rises hallelujah I feel like praying no oh, this thing is on me I feel like praying I wish I were alone I feel like praying let me tell you how what to do whenever your spirit is stirred don't go to bed pray immediately make sure you can sleep praying but don't waste it 
there are times this kind of things happen to you alone you are listening to a message every time every time because the moment you feel it is like a spiritual feeling station something is happening prayer is like opening the tank you see that you open the tank oh god feel me let that anointing come let that fire come and then it comes upon your spirit these are simple spiritual techniques that keep people strong some of you after hearing this now you now relax back to carnality you see that carnality doesn't mean something evil you just come down to the this is what it means to be in the spirit your spirit is alive ready to receive like a womb like a woman's womb ready to receive seed see that everything that comes from heaven bam, like a woman takes in you take in something and immediately and the realm of the spirit doesn't work with nine months you can take in immediately and certain things happen and you will birth it out immediately hallelujah the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet Genesis 1 verse 26 and God said let us make man in number one our image everybody say image number two after our likeness and then he says let them always oh, projected have dominion please stop the bible says let us make man in two using two dimensions the first is our image now until adam we know that already that they were already inhabitants upon the earth right other dispensations carried different kinds and types of humanoid species adam is not the first man are we together the first man who opened up our dispensation but there have been other humanoid species again and again upon the earth are we together now who had bodies bodies that were spiritual bodies that were not mortal bodies that were made out of different substances there were dispensations where the men that lived in those dispensations had bodies that were made of light quantized light there were dispensations where men had bodies that were made of other substances not earthly and not god's own kind of body they were heavenly body as we call it but then there was a grading of them according to different di dimensions are we together now but then when it came to the making of man listen all other species were made in the likeness of god but never in his image the image of god was what lucifer wanted lucifer was already in the likeness of god the likeness of god means god has two hands the bible doesn't tell us he has um the seven eyes and seven horns are just prophecies are we together now god has two legs he stands on one head there are creatures all kinds of things but i'm saying god as a person when jesus came the bible called him the full expression of the image of the christ so we see him carrying that form all other humanoid species were in the likeness of man of god but man was in the image the image of god is a spiritual quality right the the imprint of his person the very factor that makes god god is where you get the root word kabod glory the essence of god was vested in his image image so man was made this time around not just in the likeness of god but the image of god and then god told us straight up the purpose for making that man watch this he never said let them be preachers he never said let them be apostles please listen he never said let them be pastors he didn't say let them conduct koinonia are we together the mandate was let them have dominion write that word down dominion dominion is a language of governance it's a political language a language of governance dominion is a language of legislature legislature has to do with enacting or enforcing laws enacting birthing them or enforcing the ones that have already been passed dominion means to take charge take charge 
of a territory dominion means to take charge dominion talks of stewardship please write it down so let them take charge let them legislate let them govern let them have stewardship this is god's original idea a great mentor dr miles munro will tell you that's god's original idea now watch this in theology there's what we call the law of first use right the law of first use means that whenever you want to study the context of a word the first key is to go and find where it was first used the context upon which it was used is the anchor with which you will use to interpret every other appearance of it are we together if it veers off from the first context then you must use another strategy of interpreting it are we together now so the first time we see the word dominion it was attached to man the first time we see god making man he didn't sit down and rest later on and then he woke up and said man i don't know what to do with you okay let's try dominion have it and see he says let them have dominion dominion stewardship control redemption as we know was a veering off of the original plan please understand this everything from genesis 4 listen carefully everything from genesis 4 down up until acts chapter 1 was an extra curriculum added to it the original agenda of god had to do with dominion that's why i read for you revelations and genesis everything that is in between came as a remedy system are we together please you have to understand this god's original idea was not to have the fivefold ministry god's original idea was not to have churches uh -uh. god's original idea is not to have crusades god's original idea was not to have altar calls god's original idea was not to have healing services all of those things were predicated upon something that happened we call it the fall of man man's use of his will to defy god's will in rebellion led to other provisions so everything from genesis chapter 4 the law and and the annals of the kings and everything that happened down they were of course there were adumbrations but immediately from that time it was a system to be able to get man to qualify back to carry out the dominion mandate listen the dominion mandate was and is still god's desire and intent for man now many believers do not know this we come around church activities which is good we come around spiritual growth which is good we even come around going to heaven which is not a bad idea the bible says it so we believe it but much more than going to heaven are we together now much more than all of these things oh i'm looking forward to my jesus coming someday the bible says to look forward to his appearance however god's original idea for you was not heaven god's original idea for you was earth it is still earth it will always be earth his plans can change but his purposes are eternal are we learning something so imagine for instance um can i use you come my goal for this gentleman everybody watch this my goal for this gentleman is to go and carry that water you see that water that's what i want to carry so at the beginning of the journey I have stated the end from the beginning because that's the character of god he reveals the end from the beginning then you start leaving that script now this guy starting his journey something happens are we together let's assume that he injures himself through whatever it is now i temporarily suspend i suspend this agenda of him getting there to treat something that went wrong with him are we together 
that is everything that came from the law until Jesus it was a fair enough of the original manuscript to be able to bring man back to the position now when you come back to that position and it so happens that this time around it must be in Christ listen so when you now come back to that position you are supposed to continue that agenda but when you get distracted and you now forget about the agenda and you are doing other things the one who sent you will never have fulfillment and satisfaction are we together the bible says better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof thank you so there are many people doing several things just, just calm down with this for a moment i want everybody to hear me everybody say marriage shout it marriage. say employment. employment shout it employment. say promotion. promotion say houses, houses. say cars. cars say long life, long life. divine health divine bungalow long just say everything i say duplex, duplex. jeep Prosperity. Prosperity. Hold on. All those things are requirements that help us back so that we can continue this agenda. In themselves, they are useless as far as God's eternal counsel is concerned. Their usefulness only comes in in how they help you align to fulfill this. Are we together? So marriage on its own is useless to you if it cannot find a bearing to this. Car, jeep on its own is useless to you until it finds a bearing. Let me tell you, one of the most useless ways of living on earth is not to have the dominion mandate at work in your life is not to have the consciousness of God's kingdom agenda yet you are achieving things so at the end of it like the rich fool you gather money oh I made wise financial decisions and God looks at you have you read in the Bible that our works will be tried with fire what do you think will be the basis that means there are people that you will see like a heap and fire will pass <laughs> And at the end of it, what will be there will not be up to my hand. They will be gauged with respect to their nearness to this agenda. Stewardship of earth. Kingdom advancement, we call it. Please, you must understand this. If you don't understand this, you will never be an effective Christian. We have been so distracted. We have veered off this. Prosperity teaching without a kingdom understanding will lead people to carnality and useless living are we together teaching people to wear nice clothes wear these and people claim cars and claim all of this all those things are only useful to the degree to which so we have a church that is full of largely carnal and lost driven people not because the object of their desire is wrong in itself but it has no kingdom bearing are we together so someone looks at a jeep just pass and say hey i claim it and god says okay with respect to what i say god just leave me i claim it i shall claim it there are ways you can know immature believers and there are ways you can know that they have not been trained well let me tell you how to measure growth in the spirit when a man's life has been aligned to the purposes of the kingdom and everything that proceeds from him with respect to his desires are only there to create a platform for this dominion mandate that person is a mature believer are we together if i ask you what are your concerns now Many of us will lift our hands and say, money, money, sir. Direct money. Just money. Naira, like that. Pounds, dollars, money. Another person will say, child, child, this my womb must carry a child. You ask the person, why are you so desperate for a child? You know what the person is going to say? Largely, all the people who married uh, uh, what, around my, my time, 
have children some have two some have five some have ten i'm alone and that's the reason why the person wants a child are we together ask someone why are you going to school say are you joking you want me to be hungry abi okay if you are full what is it for well i'm for everybody it's like that i need to get a good job then another person says i'm not getting a good job i'm a businessman because he went to one seminar both of them are useless as far as the kingdom is concerned if you cannot state bringing your strong reason let me tell you a chief you've heard me preach this again and again the dominion mandate remains god's desire and anybody who plunges into that agenda has commanded both the hand and the heart of god both the hand and the heart of god supplies don't just follow your needs they follow your pursuit of the dominion mandate prosperity long life healing all of these things pursue you when you pursue this jesus said it this way 633 matthew but seek first the kingdom kingdom it didn't say seek first heaven the kingdom is not heaven seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and then he says in doing so all other things shall be added unto you are we together it is god's desire that we reign in life and look at me the concept of reigning in life has nothing to do with usurping authority over people please give us genesis 126 again god meticulously listed everything he wanted us to have dominion over let's look at it please 126 let's hurry up genesis 1 26 and god said let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion read on now over what the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth notice that man was not mentioned the dominion mandate is not usurping authority and control over men when you do that it's called witchcraft it's called manipulation it's an attitude of the antichrist every government that oppressed people had a revolt historically at a point in time the people were angry you know why there's chaos and anarchy because people were not designed to be dominated they were designed to be led they were not designed to be ruled when in bible days when god wanted to punish either his people or your enemies he gave you authority to treat them like animals so he would cause them to become slaves he would cause them to become servants he would cause them to serve you not like a man serving somebody he loves subject them to slavery slavery had always been a way of god communicating his dissatisfaction either with his people or people who made themselves his enemies listen the moment you find out an appetite to rule over men i don't mean lead men rule over men is the spirit of the antichrist there is a programming that has come from babylon that is at work in your life unfortunately this system that we live in has designed people to live that way right from primary school they clap for you and give you award for taking first now the idea is not whether you did well or not the idea is that you beat other people so they clap for you in their presence now their humiliation becomes your trophy are we together as you hold that award and look at your closest rival and smile in victory and watch the pain of the person you see footballers when they win arsenal man you the ones who win flaunt the cup and you see the other people crying and that cry is the joy and the triumph of the people is an antichrist system now of course we use it all the time some of you have schools use it the lord help you but i'm we're examining the word it's not supposed to be that way so now you find out that students from primary school secondary school their agenda is not to do well their agenda is to beat others 
They clap for you with respect to how you trample others. That's why malpractice comes in. It's an effort to force your way to the top, whether you are ready or not. So you manipulate ways. They even name generators, I pass my... You see where those revelations came from? They look very subtle, but they are devilish understandings sponsored by Babylon. What is your neighbor's... Um, 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 what is the issue with your neighbor and your life? No. I pass my neighbor. So you now compare yourself on healthy competition. Every time men try to usurp authority over men, it's now going to be survival of the fittest. Whoever can oppress someone. Are we together? But God's idea is to lead men, not oppress them. In fact, they asked Jesus this question. Who will be the greatest? You see the disciples? Greatest, greatest, not who will be great. Who will be the greatest, the chiefest of all? And Jesus looked at them. And then he said, the, the Pharisees and all of this use that method of leadership. He said, but it should not be among you. Whoever wants to be great must be your minister, your servant. That the way up is to serve people, not truncate them. This is a good message for a pastor's conference. Because we live in a time where men of God in the name of spiritual authority, I believe in authority, have pocketed the destinies of other people. Some of you here are victims of this and you need deliverance fast. Where a man of God takes your destiny and puts it in his pocket. He may be well-meaning, but he or she was also indoctrinated into that understanding. And they make it look like you leave me, you die. If I ask for money, you don't ask questions. If I come to your house and say rice, you say yes sir. Beans, yes sir. Everything, yes sir. And they use scripture and threaten people. It is antichrist. The moment you find out that you are forcing people to respond to you outside of their will, you are subscribing to another system. It is not of God. What of workers in the house of God? You. You must be a worker. What of partners? You. Promise. This is your suit. You are going to start sewing 50,000. And the guy says, how about, mm, I'm, I'm your boss in office. I know how much I'm paying you. 50,000. That thing looks nice. It is not God's way. Hello? I know you don't like what I'm saying. We are teaching on the dominion mandate. Many of the chaos and the anarchy that we have around our society, that passion to oppress people, that passion to leave people bankrupt of information because knowledge gives light. Is that true? That's why many times they do not want people to be educated because when they are enlightened, they can know their rights and they can stand up. So they keep people in ignorance. There are systems and nations that the strength of that oppression is hinged upon the lack of orientation of the people. Then we have carved out a name. We call them masses. Masses. And then all kinds of sociologists began to come up with their, their postulations to call religion the opium of the masses. People like Karl Marx and the rest came up with all kinds of things. It was smart, you are a sociologist, answer it, but oh, that is junk. I'm sure wherever he is now, he has known the truth. Listen, let me tell you. You see, the Holy Spirit is the oldest authorized spiritual entity on earth today. He's worth your trust. Are we together? Everything started in his presence till now. The dominion mandate is not about usurping authority over people. Listen, the dominion mandate is not about outshining people. The dominion mandate is not outshining pastors, outshining men of God. I have larger crowds than you. That means we are taking over. The concept of take over must be well defined. Because for many people, take over means to come and push you. You had a small church. We came and within one year, we are the ones in Zaria. We are taking over. We have to be careful. Because most of what we call kingdom advancement is not only sheep stealing, it's sheep killing, sheep destruction, and so on and so forth. Let me clarify for us what the dominion mandate is. It has nothing to do with outshining people. It has nothing to do with competition. 
it has everything to do with the governance of the earth. It has everything to do with the stewardship of God's system. To the end that the fullness of his glory, kabod, his essence, his lifestyle would find expression in the earth. John, uh, Matthew chapter 6, we we'll read from verse um, 9 and 10. Jesus is teaching us how to pray. And then he tries to instill in us a dominion and kingdom paradigm. And he says, give us Matthew chapter, yes. He says, after this manner, therefore pray. Our Father which art in heaven, we hallow or we revere your name. Then verse 10 says, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Your agenda, that domain you have carved out for us. We want your influence. The word kingdom is a combination of two words. A king's domain, dominion. The sphere where the dominion of a king finds expression. Kingdom. Are we together now? So God's prayer for us is that we pray that on this side of his kingdom, that the reality of our stewardship, the reality of the purposes of God be established across the earth the same way it is done in heaven. It has nothing to do with ministry. It has nothing to do with usurping men. Ministry, prosperity are only tools to help us. Say prosperity is only a tool. Divine health is only a tool. So you see, when you have these things, the dominion mandate consumes you. They will never steal away God from your life. That was the mistake of the rich fool. He thought life was only about making money. When he now made money and built bands, he secured himself. Hear what he told himself. My soul find rest. In other words, I have come to the end of my pursuit. Nothing else to be done. And God says, no. This is a rich fool. Tonight, because you are useless as far as my agenda is concerned. Tonight, this night, your soul is required of you. What is the key to carrying out the dominion mandate? The next teachings, I'm going to be teaching us the different dimensions of the dominion mandate. But what is the key? The key is in Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Another scripture that has not been properly understood by many. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Let's see where God will help us tonight. It says, for if by one man's offense, that one man now, um, death reigned by one, Adam, the first Adam, right? Adam, the husband of Eve. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more, listen, they that receive two things. What's number one? abundance of take note of that number two and of the gift of righteousness these are the two requirements to be able to execute the dominion mandate effectively number one the gift of righteousness the bible did not put them in the order they should come it just gave you information the first thing you need to be able to carry out the dominion mandate effectively. That mandate of exercising God's sovereign control on earth is the ability to be a possessor of what the Bible calls the gift of righteousness. Then number two, abundance. Abundance of grace. The Bible says whoever is a possessor of these two realities can reign effectively in the earth reigning in the earth is not just you see dominion there are different aspects of dominion i'll be teaching us in other series there are dimensions of dominion authority and the ability to legislate is only one of the dimensions that's not all there is to dominion creativity you see that authority has to do with legislature through your words through decrees Creativity has to do with legislature, influence through your seeds, through your ideas. Right? There are many dimensions I'll be teaching you. So, executing authority, the capacity to speak and have things happen is only one of the dimensions of dominion. Unfortunately, many people come around there and they feel because I speak and some things happen, I'm walking in dominion. 
You'll be very blessed by this series. It will help you to reset what you call Christianity. So that you will arrange things accordingly. And know what your ultimate pursuit should be. Because there's confusion in the body of Christ. For many, like we always teach, and well-meaning and innocently, the goal is heaven. And that's not a lie. But the Bible never teaches going to heaven as the end of all things. It's not in the Bible. I'm a Christian. Are we together? I believe in heaven. But that's, that's not it. You read your Bible. The Bible talks about this whole earth and the whole heavens passing away. A new earth coming and God living where he is. I told you heaven, listen. Heaven was never initially God's throne. There, is, there was a day that there was no heaven. Yet God was alive and was existing. The Bible says he dwells in unapproachable light. He created heaven and put his throne there. And that's why he said heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool. He is going to move that throne now to the earth. So God did not used to live in heaven. No. He created heaven for reasons that we are going to find out. The Bible as we know has not revealed to us clearly. These are some of the hidden mysteries that eating of the tree of life will supply us when we get to the new Jerusalem. That's why our knowledge will still be unfolding. Are we together now? We are going to find out because there certainly was a reason why the heavens and the earth were created. Genesis 1 verse 1. They were not just created just because of Adam. Uh -uh. They were fixed back because of Adam. God's original idea, listen carefully, with respect to making heavens in the beginning and the earth, what we even call the dominion mandate given to our dispensation is a subset of that ultimate agenda. We will find out. Revelation ends with the beginning of a new dispensation. Are you blessed? That means there are many things we are going to find out. Let me give you a few information. <laughs> Should I say this? Hmm. Some of the spirit beings that we generically call angels were once inhabitants in the earth. They had their dispensation. Are we together? And the same way we have what we call judgment day and rapture. A similitude of that event happened to them. They now are still excelling in light growing and they have been authorized together with the angels to come and serve the saints and help us complete this dispensation angels are not the only spirit beings in the realm of the spirit anytime you see any other thing that is not god and it's not the four living creatures we just say they are angels in a sense we are right the word is angelio a messenger they are always sent ones from the throne but in terms of classification and configuration no angels are not the only spirit beings that are sent on errand read your bible mount zion there are many inhabitants there there are spirits of just men made perfect correct there are innumerable company of angels there are all kinds of things that happen there in that atmosphere of mount zion am i boring you are you learning something when we know this you see even the things we call rema are only relative because they are not strange to the realm of the spirit they are only coming to us newly demons know some of these things i tell you Theologically speaking, you see, when these spirits came, you, you know the Bible talks about those we call the Nephilims and other kinds of giants who the Bible says were a product of these spirit beings. The Bible calls them sons of God. Is that true? Sons of God who slept with the daughters of men and gave birth to people who were half men and half spirit entities like Oak, the king of Bashan, Goliath of God and many other people who appeared we see that they were superhuman some of them had six fingers six toes it was some of this interaction with these spirit beings that also taught women what we call the mystery of seduction all of these things were part of the doctrines is what paul together calls the doctrines of demons are we together now it was some of the propositions that these spirit beings brought to the daughters of men that made them to like them and even allow them to have children with them. 
that's that's another separate lecture again but just for you to know and to understand that a lot has happened in this earth and if we do not stay fixed upon what authorize our being here we will live very useless lives as a church and as individuals say amen this teaching will give meaning to your prosperity this teaching will give meaning to your fasting and prayer. Do you know why many people get born again and stop there? Have you seen people that when you tell them, oh, I'm praying, I'm on a program, I'm on a this and that, they look at you and say, what? that's a waste because they do not understand this. So for them, the entire scope of their theology is escapism from hell. And then you stand and continue to manage your life through repeated repentance until rapture comes. The day you hear that trumpet, do anything you want, you are safe. You see the theology? That's a torturous and frustrating theology. Jesus said, occupy till I come. The word occupy does not mean build houses. Advance with those influence until I come. There's something we are missing. That's why our young ones are not interested in God again. Because our marketing of what we give them as Christianity is ugly and unattractive. So you see a young child of 12 years and now put stringent rules around that child. And then you tell the child, be born again. Then the child is born again and say, okay, daddy, what next? He says, are you asking me? Let's go to church. And he says, daddy, I'm going to church every Sunday. Now you say, I should add Wednesday. He says, oh, yeah, join baptismal class. I see that you are too idle. Then the guy joins a baptismal class. Then they teach him the doctrines of the denomination. Then the day for water baptism comes. They baptize him, give him a, an English name, and hand over a certificate. And then the child says, okay, what do I do again? He says, just continue coming to church. And he says, no, no, no. Let me, what is all this? I cannot just continue coming to church. Daddy, I think I have grace to dance. If I see you dancing in my house, I will kill you by myself. My child, dance? Okay, daddy, I have the grace to paint. Paint for what? Serve God! So they have taught you, painting and serving God are not the same. And you leave painting. And you leave this. Daddy, I think I have a passion about broken marriages. Say, don't be stupid. Concentrate and grow spiritually. Jesus is coming very soon. Now, that's a very innocent doctrine. Don't get me wrong. I'm not being sarcastic. But that thing, many of you seated looking at me now, is one of the reasons why you left the things of God. Because you couldn't under... There was no logic to it. Someone comes from being a Muslim and then becomes a child of God, maybe a Christian and all of that, and you sit the person down and the person now says, okay, I have escaped this, I'm a child of God. Say, so what do I do now? Become a worker in church. Then the person is a worker in church and then one day the person says, honestly, I don't know what, what is going on here. What is the meaning of this? Where are we going? Just say, don't worry, oh, this thing, there's a reward. And the person is saying, I don't understand. Then others have said, no, God could not keep us like this. Let's add flavor to it. Then they swung to the other side of the pendulum and the church has become a place of just fun and laughter. And say, let's just enjoy ourselves. And they say, we are occupying. You are not occupying. That's laziness and idleness. Are we together? So we have all just fun and play around. Play and play and joke and take the church of God to become like a museum or an amusement park. No. Both are wrong. Let me tell you. When you know the dominion mandate, you will be so busy, you will not even, you will think age is not on your side. You see people wake up in the morning with a sense of urgency. They, they are, the issue of heaven is settled. See, let me tell you. Um, we are going, I hope that one of these series will look at redemption. And I'm going to be showing you that the issue of heaven is not, is not supposed to be a frightful thing. Are we together? The issue of heaven is like an admission letter into a university. When you have an admission letter, it is possible to lose the admission letter. But you cannot be in 200 level and all you are thinking about is your admission letter. No. You have lectures. Is that true? You are looking at something else. Imagine a student in 300 level and he's moving. Where's my admission letter? And he opens the box and sees it and keeps it. And says, ah, thank you, Jesus. That's what we do with this rapture heaven thing. I'm not against it. You know me. I love people. I love souls. But having that kind of mindset will never help you to be effective. That's why we don't treasure creativity. That's why we don't treasure dominion. 
Why? Because we think the most important thing is let me just be careful. God can come any day and any time. Let him just come and find me. You're, you're being fit. Going to heaven. Listen. Going to heaven has never been something that a man did for himself by qualification. You have to understand this. The part where you get that you merit is the reward of crowns. Is based on your works. Utilizing the grace that was supplied for you and the degree to which you advance the kingdom to it, with it will determine your rewards. We will not get the same rewards. When a child is born, we say he came from where? Please help me. <laughs> now that child is now afraid to go back. Uh, okay, let me not, let's, let's not talk about this thing. I don't want to make us feel very bad. I need to clarify a lot of things. I hope that God will grant me grace to teach it. The book of life, rapture, heaven, the conditions for heaven, and all of that. Because you see, the Bible lets us know clearly that what the Bible calls, what we have called the judgment day, is a season of reward for the saints. The Bible clearly lists those who will be punished, who should be afraid. Why should I be in Christ why should I be walking with God and my life is perpetually a subject of fear? Fear. Those things look nice. You know, sometimes you have to shake people a little bit to get serious with their lives. But it's impossible to serve God that way. There was a time I think there was a propaganda. There have been many about the coming of Christ. And people till today, people still come up with visions. I saw that Jesus Christ is coming in August 24th. And you see people, people sold their houses, land that they would have been rich now. Their children are suffering. Foolish people made stupid business decisions, gave away land. You know, people shaved their head. They were waiting and all, and, and, and all of that. And nothing really happened. God does not teach us to wait for him this way. The Bible already tells us that the coming of Christ will be like the days of Noah. Let me tell you. Let me, I'm sharing with you the dominion mandate. The coming of Christ will not take believers unaware. Did you hear what I said? The coming of Christ, I repeat, will not take believers unaware. Please give me 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We are reading 1 to 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Is God helping us? We are going to find someone and pray tonight. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But of the times, please look up. Whether you are inside, outside, I want us to read it together. Okay, I'll read it. I'll tell you where to join. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write to you. So he's talking to who? Brethren, the church. Is that true? Verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Many theologians, well-meaning, stop here. And they keep telling people he's coming like a thief in the night and coming like it. The Bible did not stop here. It was Paul himself who had his revelation, uh, his knowledge of the mystery by revelation. Are we together? Verse 3. For when they shall say, those who are without, when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And they, 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 they shall not escape. If you are a child of God, read the next verse with all your heart. One, two, give us verse four, please, quickly. One, two, read. One more time. So if that day overtakes you, what is the sign that you are in darkness? Is that true? The Bible says we are the light of the world. Is that true? It says, but ye brethren, I'm speaking to you of the times and the seasons. And I am telling you that it will be in the similitude of the day of Noah. That day, look at it, it's in your Bible. I didn't write this. That day will not overtake you as a thief. Why? Because the Spirit of God is in us. There is a salt covenant. We are joined. He that is joined to Christ 
is one spirit. Are we together? You can never serve God when you live in fear of rapture and fear of heaven and fear of hell. Growing up, there used to be a word that the old folks used to use. Assurance of not salvation. Assurance of salvation. Assurance of admission letter. Assurance of job. That's why every time they give you a job, they give you a little paper. It's a token to prove to you that you are there. The Bible says God gave us his spirit as a proof, as a seal of our redemption. As a proof that we are now the begotten of him. That he's no longer the firstborn, um, the only begotten. He's now the first begotten of we, the brethren. Are we together now? So that God is not ashamed. He's not ashamed to call us brethren. But has given us the same spirit whereby we cry, Abba, Father. It doesn't mean people don't backslide. It doesn't mean people don't derail. But I want you to know this. There is a way we have been teaching. I'm showing you the things that have occupied us so that we do not focus on the dominion mandate. 80% of the church is occupied by just preparing themselves for rapture. And I'm not against books. I know that there are books that have been written. There are encounters. Am I boring you? This is a foundation. Because several of us are living in fear. You don't even know what to believe. You are afraid. You are sitting, you are standing and you are wondering. And they tell you if God comes and just when you are, you know, maybe shouting at somebody, that's the end of it. If he comes to meet you shouting. You see that? And so we walk in all kinds of fear. Even when we go before God. There is no confidence in approaching him. I believe in repentance. You know me. I always balance things. It's foolishness that makes people to just swing the other side and don't coordinate it. There are spiritual coordinates that guide our dispensing of the truth. When you swing things in either side and they are not regulated by the word, it will still lead to error. I believe in repentance. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There were two men hanging on the cross. Two of them were thieves. True or false? A thief is somebody who stole something and they caught him. Those ones now. Is that true? They were hanging on the cross. And one was quarreling Jesus. Look, Jesus, you are this and nicer of you to help us kill this people and let's escape and go and you see, there was no repentance in his heart. The other person turned and said, Ah, this guy is undeserving. We deserve this thing. And Jesus looked at him and said, This day you will be with me in paradise. This day. Why? For believing me. For believing me. For believing my innocence. Whatever gave you that revelation must be sponsored by the Spirit of God. Because no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit. To say Jesus is Lord does not mean J-E-S-U-S-I-S-L-O-R-D. No, that's not it. The Lordship of Jesus is declared by revelation. Our announcing it is simply a product of It's not the reason. No. That's why the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, while they yet, Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell on them. There are so many things in my spirit. We have to free ourselves. The average Christian that we see walking around does not exactly know what he should do for God. Even what we, when we talk about purpose, most people think purpose is just for graduates. You are a graduate, your purpose is whatever you studied, do something with it, get married, train your children and give some money to the church and God will help you. That is a fruitless life. It truly is a fruitless life. The dominion mandate has been corrupted by an exaggerated fear of hellfire, fear of heaven, fear of rapture. And there are books that keep coming. Every time you go online and just Google it, some of you, oh, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw rapture. It may not be a lie. 
The impact of revelations can cause you to be biased if the Holy Spirit does not balance you. You can be caught up in an event and see the rapture happen and the catastrophe that happened. And if God does not give you balance, you can return back to earth and start harassing everybody. Brother, be prepared. I'm late for work. I'm telling you that Jesus is coming and you know, and all, and will make people feel guilty. And pastors, sometimes we are gullible because there are members that bully us. I want to come and teach a series. I had a seven days revelation about rapture. I need to come and teach people. And they come and stand and at the end of that teaching you wonder whether God is really love. There are those who have seen every pastor in hell. Listen to my message, Revelation, uh, what was it called? Reality of Heaven and Hell. There are people who have seen, Satan found out that this is a very useful tool. So those who started having these experiences, Satan can appear as an angel of light. Are we learning? He now began to open people to experiences. It is true that they left earth. It is true that they were somewhere. It is true that they saw tears, similitudes, and they returned back to destroy people. Let me tell you something. This issue of rapture and heaven and hell has caused more fear and uncertainty to the extent that pastors who love God and have served in the vineyard for years cannot stand today. If I say it right now, if you know you are going to heaven, don't stand up. But if I say stand up, some of you will just stand up so that you are not embarrassed. So that if somebody will say, we are praying together, you mean you don't even know where you are going. You are not my friend again. But the truth is many people don't know. For many people, this is our theology. Let's just keep watching. The day the trumpet sounds, if I make it glory to be to, be to Jesus. No. So we preoccupy our minds and never do anything. Are we together? We never do anything. It has made many fathers irresponsible in the name of being evangelists or missionaries. Ah, I need, there's an urgency in my spirit. I need to preach the gospel. Jesus can come, you know, any day, any time. Honey, there is no food. That's not the issue. Let's just pay the price. God knows when he comes, he will reward us. And the wife is saying, what are you saying? There's no food in the house. Nothing is happening. And at the end of it, the man will run and leave them and call the woman a witch. Call the children. He gave birth to the five children, witches. Leave the children to roam around like prostitutes and say, I am going to the mission field. And then an unbeliever will meet them and train them and convert them. You see what is happening all around? Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. There has never been any stadium-like crusade with any evangelism. But you are using an aberration of the dominion mandate. Occupy structures, systems, everywhere until I come. Listen, brothers and sisters. If we do not get this straight, we are going to live very useless lives. The most heat of this tragedy is the north. Northern Christians are the most dominion mandate non-compliant. You know why? Because the Christianity we received in the north was purely evangelical. Are we together? And which was correct. But I'm saying that the imbalance there is that because of the urgency of things like persecution and so on and so forth, people now were indoctrinated into not being serious with things like their lives, their families. It's in the north, you can see one man with five, six children staying in a small room and he tells you, look, what is the use of building a house? I saw a vision and I know that when Jesus comes, call me Banzane. You hear them say it. And they, they threaten your visionary attitude. Oh, I want to build a house. I want to do this. All those things are useless. When the Nada Moto, when the Bible Moto, yes, you also call me Banzane. And then we say those things. They look very nice. They look appealing. And they are responsible for the pain that many families, the pain that many churches, the pain and the decadence that happens in the society. Nobody takes responsibility over anything because we are saying, after all, Jesus is coming. The concept of Jesus is coming 
is not a concept that should stimulate indiscipline and unseriousness. Jesus is coming to ginger us to occupy that he comes to meet us as a, uh, as a faithful servant. This mistake was adumbrated in Matthew 25. He gave unto one five talent. He gave unto one two. He gave unto the other one. The one with one talent is doing what we are doing. I know he's coming soon. There's no need wasting my time. When will I go and do business with this money? And he buried it. When Jesus came, he was prepared, waiting for his arrival. Whereas the rest were there trying to bring interest for the master. Are we together now? And then when he came, he now said, you, you are a hard man. You have been threatening me. I can't wait to give you this, your coin. Carry this, your nonsense and leave. What did Jesus call him? Wicked one, two, or profitable servant and those who spend their time multiplying it listen to what he told them he said well done good and faithful servant one of the synoptics said i appoint to you kingdoms that's the reward are we together jesus is coming soon should never threaten the dominion mandate the consciousness of rapture should never threaten the dominion mandate. The consciousness of hell should never threaten the dominion mandate. The dominion mandate is not an antichrist mandate. Hey, look at me, church. The dominion mandate is not a mandate for ambitious people. Most people preach that the, the dominion mandate is for Pentecostals. So whenever we are talking about advancing um, the kingdom, they look at great people like our fathers, Bishop Oedeko and the rest, and say these people are just carnal. All they are thinking about is university. Jesus is coming soon. All they are thinking about is empowering people, prosperity. All this money, money thing, and you see bloggers writing in ignorance. We made that mistake, and now we are about losing almost all our missionary secondary schools. Because the missionaries that came, and other orthodox ministries like Catholic, Equa, you know, and all of that, they built schools. Is that true? They built hospitals. That, that was a, a mindset of the Dominion Mandate. Adv they permeated lands because of the medical aid they could bring to people. So although they did not like their gospel, they still gave them land and gave them space. Today we are losing this and there are no good schools again. You cannot trust a school where your child will be trained properly. The mission schools no longer have money and support. You know why? Because those to support them said, no, we are closer to rapture. There is no need supporting you. Let us just wait. Jesus is coming. Many of us here are already having that mindset. It must change tonight. Being rapture compliant is not running away from responsibility. And sitting down to say, oh, let me make sure I don't talk. No. He comes to meet you like that. He calls you an unprofitable servant. Are we blessed? We are going to pray. I wish I had time. We will continue next week. The gift of righteousness. Righteousness, like Kenyon would say, um, would define. He calls it the ability to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of inferiority and condemnation. As I've learned about righteousness, I've found out it's deeper than that. Revelation is progressive. You know that Kenyon died long ago. Are we together? If Kenyon were still alive, he would have upgraded a lot of things. Righteousness is not just the ability to stand before the Father. Righteousness is the very nature of God. God's nature. Are we together? Not just doing right. God's nature, His rightness before the Father is what was imparted upon us. Listen, there is nobody who is qualified to execute the dominion mandate if you do not carry the righteousness of God. The Bible calls us now the righteousness of God. That's why He calls it a gift. Everybody say it is a gift. Say it again, it's a gift. Now every gift God gives you, you use those gifts to produce fruits. Read the Bible. Gifts go with fruits. Gifts, fruits. Gifts, fruits. The gift of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. The gift of the Spirit is God's benevolence to you. The fruit of the Spirit is a product of your own alignment. It is your own participation in the equation. There is the gift of righteousness. There is the fruit of righteousness. The outworkings of righteousness. Hallelujah. Listen. The first thing any believer needs 
is to possess the gift of righteousness it is only the gift of righteousness that authorizes the holy spirit to come upon you listen you cannot have the holy spirit without the gift of righteousness it's impossible there are progressions the first thing that must happen to a man to be able to reign in life is to be born of a woman you have to be born of a woman that's what authorizes you to wear a body the second thing that must happen to you is rebirth regeneration from the word regime please make sure you're writing this down the first thing that must happen to you is your natural birth everyone born of a woman comes with the nature of the first Adam the fallen nature the nature of the first Adam is the nature that is corrupted is the nature that is called sin sin is not just something you do sin is a nature that comes to every man he say in sin did my mother conceive me the true concept of sin is not the things that are done the true concept of sin is a nature that is inherent in you that compels you to be a slave to it and then execute a lot of things so the first thing that must happen to any man is birth the second is rebirth 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 what is rebirth an impartation of the nature and the image of christ in that man hallelujah these are realities of redemption that we must know in order to execute the dominion mandate the bible says this let me tell you what the bible says we're rounding up give give me please give me first peter chapter 1 verse 23 i think 22 23 first peter chapter 1 22 23 um i'm looking for one i'm, I'm sure it's one of those verses first peter being born again being born again everybody listen this born again thing is a big deal being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abided forever being born again or being saved as we call it is not just some oh god oh god i give you my heart i give you my heart i am your child i am your child amen amen and they say congratulations you are now a child of god take a little hamper a little tape in it and a little biscuit and you are no 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 that, that's not it at all being born again is a supernatural event listen that's why you must make sure everyone around you has that experience it is the condition to fulfill the dominion mandate the Bible says that only those who have received the gift of righteousness and then the abundance of grace shall by that one man, that mediator of the new covenant, Jesus himself. The foundation of our work in the kingdom, the foundation of the restructuring for the dominion mandate starts with Jesus. The pattern man, the portrait, Jesus himself. The Bible says looking up to him, he is the epicenter of this dominion mandate he is the epicenter of the entire life of the believer whenever we talk kingdom whenever we talk of anything the epicenter of what we call the faith life now is jesus you begin to trace your compass from him whenever you draw any bearing outside of the christ that whatever it is that you are constructing is already in error christ is the standard we start with him and we begin to navigate our path through this kingdom life it starts in christ that's why the bible says the first qualification is a regeneration comes from the word regene because every man born of a woman is carrying a spiritual gene of the first adam the fallen nature you do not have to commit any physical sin anyone who is not a possessor of righteousness cannot be in heaven cannot be in heaven the only not exception to this that i've seen from bible are babies why because their wills have not been developed for them to make a choice that's why there are no babies in hell whoever has a vision with babies in hell did not go to hell he went somewhere else are we together now yes
the gift of righteousness do you have that gift it's a gift it's a gift pastor i give you a gift as with any gift it must be received that is a gift you receive it you can receive it this is the foundation i give it to you you receive it i give, you can reject it that's what the bible says as many as received him gave he them the power to become to become to become the power to become so when you receive him the power to become is given to you they that are possessors so when you have received christ by faith truly in your heart you can dare to say together with all the saints that i am part of the brethren i have a right to call abba father i have a right to call abba father he is not just your father he is not just the god of joshua selman that's a different dimension he is now our father that's why paul can say about the family in heaven and on earth we are now one big family under the same lord under the same faith under the same baptism paul was teaching there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism we have been immersed into the same experience the foundation please hear me is not impartation impartation cannot give you the gift of righteousness healing cannot give you the gift of righteousness teaching all the principles that i teach you on success and all of that as important as they are they cannot give you the gift of righteousness the gift of righteousness is freely given the custodian the authorized entity that can guarantee its release to you is jesus the christ his office is exclusively responsible for handling eternal life handling the gift of righteousness the holy spirit is only an enforcer he comes with respect in honor to your believing jesus you don't believe the holy spirit and receive the gift of righteousness no you don't believe the father and receive the gift of righteousness the same way it is not the vc signature that is on your admission letter it is the registrar but it's not the highest authority it is his office is that true so the office of the christ is responsible for allocating this when you stand and believe his report that message the reward for believing it is that the christ authorizes the spirit of god to come to you so when you come out for an altar call you don't know how supernatural what it is you are doing you don't feel anything physically you stand and heaven is watching the sun is watching lord jesus i believe in this i believe in that and while you are saying it jesus vets the sincerity of your confession and on grounds of that truth the spirit of god comes into your life representing eternal life and in that instant whether you feel clean or not the bible tells us like joshua the high priest in zechariah that that gift of righteousness is given to you the gift of righteousness is your past is your qualification it opens you up to the potentials of manifesting this dominion mandate the other dimension we'll look at is in subsequent series the abundance of grace abundance on grace another word is grace upon grace because there is saving grace that is a seed given to you as god's benevolence but it does not stop there that grace is nurtured through knowledge and understanding grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace becomes abundant as you access knowledge so in other words there are two things that you must possess the gift of righteousness and access to knowledge access to knowledge that grants you the privilege to be able to reign God is counting on us to fulfill this mandate. God is counting on us when that rebirth happens to us as believers. What then is the next step? The next step after rebirth is discipleship. Write the word down. We have abused that word. Discipleship. 
Discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign. Discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign. Discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's code of operation. Discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's belief system. Discipleship is the system where believers are trained to reign. What is happening right now in Koinonia is discipleship. The word has become so ugly, most people don't even want to hear it. Because for many people, discipleship means under some kind of stringent religious system, submitting under all sorts of things. No. We need discipleship. It is God's system where ordinary believers are now trained on the matters of the kingdom. Trained to understand the precepts of, of the kingdom. And this is why God gave apostles. This is why God gave prophets. Listen, this is why God gave evangelists. Are you seeing where we now come into the equation? We were never there from beginning. The apostolic ministry, the prophetic ministry as we know it now, is not an eternal ministry. They are not eternal. No. Jesus is not in heaven today just as our apostle. No. When he sat upon that throne, we still call him the apostle of our faith. But his ministry now, number one, is Lord. Number two, is an, as an intercessor. The Bible says he makes intercession for the saints. Even if I prophesy, the Bible says it will end. Is that true? Even prophecies will end. Even tongues will end. So a day will come when God will look at us and say, Pastor Alpha, come. Well done, good and faithful servant. I put you over Destiny Makers International and you walked with them. You did a great job. I see the devils that you casted. I see the sick bodies you have done well. Well done. Enter into the rest. There is a new assignment that is going to be given to you. A day will come, God will look at me and say, Apostle, oh, Joshua Selma, he will call me Apostle. <laughs> Whatever he calls me, he's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he will congratulate me and say, well done for the labor. They laughed at you, but you continued. You served. And when they are doing it, some of you who laughed at me will be watching. That will be such a gallant ceremony. This is what will happen in heaven. And while that handshake is going on, well done, good and faithful servant. We are smiling in glory and rejoicing. We have conquered life. We occupied well till he came. And he says, because of the TV station you people set up, we have here in the record in heaven, over one billion souls came because of this television ministry. Ah, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? You know that song? I can only imagine. Some of you, let me tell you what will happen in heaven. You will stand. You are happy you got there, but you will be ashamed. I hope you know there's shame in heaven. Oh yes, go and read your Bible. There is. You stand. No souls. No partnership. No blessing. You gossiped and said everything. The gift of righteousness brought you to heaven. Well done. And there are, you will see men who were slaughtered like animals. Men who they did all kinds of things. You will see them there. Age 33. Standing there. Happy. Because 33 is the standard. Right? And you will see them stand. And the Matthias crown will be put on them. All kinds of people. And you will stand there. No crown. No applause because you just said Jesus is coming. The, the old hymn we used to sing, only remembered for what we have done. Remember that hymn? Yes. We must train believers to reign. We don't train believers to become our church members. Pastors, you don't train believers so that I can get church members. This member consciousness is destroying God's dominion mandate. God's idea is not to have a pile of weak people looking at a superhuman human being. 
called apostle joshua selman and every sunday the man of god is here god's idea is that he uses men called gifts to prepare the believers to reign are we together the next dimension after reigning is called governance god begins to apportion dimensions apportions mountains spheres of influence that represents his desire and the people you have now trained and are still training are now allowed to begin to occupy these dimensions this is god's idea being a church member for 10 years and not doing anything for god no soul winning no building institutions that advance the agenda of god is a total waste of time that may be religion that may be christianity in court but that's not kingdom hallelujah we are going to pray our time is up i gave this illustration to help you understand that when he said have dominion the idea is not outshining people the idea is understanding that the gift of righteousness alongside the abundance of grace that is supplied on the strength of knowledge access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the systems of god empower you to now begin to occupy occupy does not mean build a house for yourself occupy does not mean buy a jeep listen carefully occupy does not mean um um carry all kinds of Gucci, designers, Louis Vuitton, and all of those things are only the fringe benefits. Are we together? They are to be able to create an ample condition for you to be effective. So, you don't rejoice and say, look, I am enjoying. Why? Look at my house. Look at five cars. Look at ten shoes. Look at trips abroad. And you put them like crowns. Whoever talks like that does not know God and does not understand the dominion mandate. So my pride and your pride is not in our cars. Have the cars, but that's not the pride. The pride is not that you are now wearing a hair of 250,000. That is useless if it did not help you advance the kingdom. Your pride is that God gave me money and I walked the systems of the kingdom because I understood I would be a kingdom financier and I used that money I sponsored a TV station that now created a platform for people to receive Jesus for people to rise for people to be built I built a university that was able to empower people they were agents of national transformation at the same time addicts for God I was able to raise a school of ministry that mentored and guided people and they became firebrand apostles and pastors this is kingdom check what you celebrate there are things that are worth celebrating pat you at the back but that is not it doesn't make any sense in the spirit i have 10 estates nonsense truly speaking i have 30 shoes nonsense if i don't balance this many of us are on the way to destruction because this is what we call christianity we come and jump around and say my faith is working why i have 30 suits look at my picture with the owner of so 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 and so oil company and you gather them around and live your entire life while you are old you just say you know i lived a successful life that's a wasted life a life of purpose and a life of meaning is a life that contributes to fulfilling the dominion mandate what is it take charge what is it expose creation to who i am and what i am and i've taught you that the dominion mandate is twofold one establishing christ in the hearts of men you must establish christ in the hearts of men that's why soul winning is non-negotiable please hear me if you are a christian and you are not winning souls god is not happy with your efficiency there is something wrong winning souls is not for preachers winning souls is your contribution to giving more space for people to know him love him and to extend his influence the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor the more and more we find people who love jesus and surrender their hearts to him and the more we can permeate our environment with the ideology we'll talk about that next week of the kingdom we are fulfilling the dominion mandate.
Now that you are born again, Apostle, I don't know what to do. Return back to the dominion mandate. Now that you have received the, the gift of righteousness, contend for the abundance of grace. How does it come? Grace and peace comes through knowledge. Multiplication through knowledge. Access. It takes a long time. The Bible says you don't just reign with grace. That grace must be lavish. It must be in abundance. That means you must be a bank of knowledge. You must be a bank of understanding. You must be a compendium of kingdom mysteries. And on the strength of those mysteries, you reign. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray three prayer points very quickly tonight. Prayer point number one. Lord, restore me. Listen. Lord, I don't like the way my life has been. I've been living my life. All I think about is food to eat, wife to marry, husband to marry, children to have. Let me just complete my education. And some of you are obsessed about marriage, obsessed about children, as if these things in themselves, obsessed about cars. Oh Lord, you have to give me a Jeep before August. And God is saying, come on, come on, come on. I'm bigger than that. You can't be on earth just for Jeeps. There is a higher and a nobler call. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, re realign my life to the dominion mandate. Realign my life. Lift your voice and pray inside and outside your gifts are only useful when they are aligned to the dominion mandate and he gave them dominion and he gave them dominion and he gave them dominion dominion over principalities and powers dominion over systems and structures Dominion to legislate. Dominion to administrate. Sheba karato sodo brega da balaraba. Enta kata kraska da balakata praska da balaraba. Hallelujah. I'll be teaching you this next week, but we can still pray. Lord. This dominion mandate is complex. Where is my own part? Show me. Lift your voice and cry. Where is my own part? We all have roles to play. That's what we call our assignments. That's what we call purpose. Are you praying? Lord, I'm tired of living a useless life. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Show me. Show me. Show me. Reveal to me the blueprint. Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Hallelujah. The last prayer point for tonight. Lord, prioritize my life. Take away distractions. Keep me focused on the things that really matter. The things that have eternal value. Lift your voice and pray. Take away distraction. Take away distraction. Let me not major on the minors. Let me not major on the minors. Take away distraction from my church. Take away distraction from my fellowship. Take away distraction. I want my life to be focused. Focus. 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 As I seek prosperity, as I seek cars, as I seek houses, as I seek influence, Lord, redirect my focus that these things do not distract me. That I will know they are only a means to an end. The end is fulfilling the dominion mandate. That the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth like the waters of the sea. Hallelujah. Let's add one more prayer point. I know our time is gone. I want you to pray and say, Lord, anything that has distracted me and has taken the place of this assignment, I pray that you restore, restore, 
some of you you are the way you look for money the way you you exaggerated it and god is out of money 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 all the way money cars houses children marriage whatever job job lift your voice and say lord i ask in the name of jesus christ cut away cut away attachments ungodly attachments attachment to things attachment to motives attachment to things attachment to motives hallelujah I'm making an altar call now I told you that the first key the Bible recommends for reigning is the gift of righteousness without Jesus you are not born again even if you have a Christian name there are people here truthfully speaking I want you to be honest with yourself tonight inside outside any of the overflows and those online as you are hearing me the Spirit of God is ministering to you and saying you truly need to make your way right you don't inherit salvation and there are those who are saying i need to rededicate my life i was never taught this way i just thought that everything is just to live fear fear go to church on sunday wherever you are our time is gone i'm going to count one to four please clear the way for them i want you to come out it will be my joy to lead you to jesus christ somebody needs to come out celebrate them they are coming please clear the way for them outside are you coming run run and join them coming we look to Yahweh Yahweh our hope is Yahweh keep coming to if they are coming from outside clear the way for them we look to Yahweh Yahweh forever Yahweh redirecting people's focuses many of you will go back and begin to have dreams and God will say you are not supposed to be here you are wasting your time be here this is the place of your call the place of grace the place of relevance those who are standing I want you to lift your right hand I salute your courage every one of you I want you to mean business don't stand here just to recite a poem say it sincerely you are about to receive the gift of righteousness say Lord Jesus I believe in you I have come before you and before your people to receive the life of God to receive the gift of righteousness so that I will reign right now I believe you are the son of God I believe you died for me I believe you rose from the dead I receive your life I declare that I'm a possessor of eternal life I receive the gift of righteousness and I declare that I begin to reign over sicknesses over limitations over Satan and all the powers of the enemy from today I declare that I'm a child of God and I continue to grow and I continue to flourish in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted Jesus thank you thank you because they are possessors of the gift of righteousness therefore I stand before God's people and I declare tonight that the gift of righteousness is given to you I declare that your sins are forgiven I declare that you will never be the same in the name of Jesus the power of sin the power of Satan the power of the flesh is broken over your life forever we supply grace for you 
in the name of Jesus. And I declare that you will begin to go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands, all of you. Please follow that gentleman. Um, take the guy under the anointing. God bless you. I salute your courage. Let's clap for them, Koinonia. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Parenting Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash underscore n